Okay, so this is uh, term one, week eight. Whoa. Yeah, so this is uh, physics um, week. Um, no, I'm not sure. Uh, wait, I'm closing the wrong stuff. <clears throat> yeah, so it's 2.20 to 2.23. Very easy. We'll go through the notes very fast. You need to know first resistors can be color code. Let me download this. Uh, resistors can be color coded. There are 10 colors going from 0 to 9, and you can memorize them using a nice uh, I don't know what you call this, but the sentence is black uh, beetles running over your garden bring very good weather. I personally memorize it black, brown, colors of the rainbow, and then gray, white. So black, brown, colors of the rainbow, are, I have them memorized, Roy G. Biv, okay, uh, then green, gray, white, okay, you can memorize it however one you want, but you should know it's 10 colors, they range from 0 to 9. How does this work? You say, for example, you have a resistor, you'd have color 1, color 2, then you'd have color 3, but that second last color would always be what we call the multiplier, and the last color would be called the tolerance. The tolerance can be gold, which is plus minus 5%, silver, which is plus minus 10 or none, which is plus minus 20. You have to have these memorized, okay? For example, if you have red, green, yellow, and then like orange, gold, what would it be? Red, what was it? Uh, uh, black, brown, Roy G. Red is two. Green is... Well, black, brown, Roy, uh, red, orange, yellow, green. Green is five. Yellow is, remember it's black, brown, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, gray, white. So they want yellow, that's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then orange is 3. But remember, the last color before the tolerance is always what we call the multiplier. Multiplier meaning... Since I have, since origin is 3 and that's the multiplier, that means I add 3 zeros at the end. If it was, let's say, brown here instead of orange, brown is 1, so that means I add 1 0. It would be 2540, not 25400. You get what I mean? So that, that's what multiplier means. And since they said gold, you always say plus, minus 5%. You need to have this memorized. <sighs> Now, variable resistors. Variable resistors are either called rheostats or potentiometers. Rheostats are used to change the current. Uh, potentiometers are used to change the potential difference. And obviously, if you change current or potential, uh, potential difference, you're going to change, consequently, the resistance. That's why we call them resistors. Right? Okay. Uh, rheostats can be circular or laboratory. These aren't really important. You can memorize this if you want. Go over the notes, but I'll skip them. Nothing really important. Uh, IV graphs. This is very important. Mm -hmm. The IV graph is called the characteristics of the circuit element. An ohmic device or an ohmic conductor is a non-directional device, meaning it doesn't care about the polarity, uh, that obeys Ohm's law. This could be a good question. If the graph, the IV graph, is a straight line, that means it is an ohmic conductor. Okay? 1 over R equals constant. I over V equals constant 1 over R. This is important, huh? I over V is 1 over R. Because, you know, V over I is R. What if you flip I over V? You have to flip R as well, so it will be 1 over R. Okay? You need to know that. Okay, IV graphs. For example, we have the filament lamp. You need to memorize these three. Okay? The filament lamp looks like this. As uh, current increases, just more, the resistance of the lamp increases w when temperature increases, right? So, obviously, as the current increases its temperature will increase. Since there's more temperature, there's more rubbing, there's more friction, there's more temperature, that means there's more resistance. That means as you go up, the slope begins to decrease. That's for the filament lamp. You know what the filament lamp is, guys? Let me show you. This is a filament lamp. It's the one that has this red stuff inside. This starts to light up, so the temperature will increase, meaning the resistance will increase. And you know, when resistance increases, that means the current flowing will begin to decrease. So lower current due to increase in resistance. Therefore, this resistance is not constant, so it's not an ohmic conductor, right? If it's an ohmic conductor, its resistance is constant. And then this, these lines are just the current if it was an ohmic conductor. Now we have thermistors. So, filament lamp, thermistors. 
temperature sensitive electrical resistors that are made up of semiconducting material. They can be negative or positive. Negative meaning if uh, meaning as temperature increases, resistance decreases. And positive similarly to the filament lamp that we had here, as the resistance increases, temperature increase or temperature increases, resistance increases. What like this one here. This one that we drew is a negative one, NTC, meaning that as temperature increases, its resistance actually decreases. So as the temperature is increasing, it will be less resistance. So that means there's going to be more current flowing. This should be IV. I don't know why I didn't write it. Okay, so it's NTC thermistor looks like this. If they said PTC, it would look like this. Okay. Uh, it has a higher current value because there's less resistance at the higher temperature. NTC is a better conductor at higher temperatures, obviously, because there's less resistance. This is the semiconducting diode. It's a simple one direction electrical device. And basically what it does, it only allows electricity or current, sorry, to pass in one direction. It's called forward bias. Okay. And this is called near ohmic, whatever. Just know these. They are used as electric rectifiers of alternating current. Rectif electric rectifiers means they basically change the flow of electric current. It goes like, Masan, it changes it, makes it flow from right to left instead of left to right. If you place a... This is in the grids. Okay, we need to... They will get this. You see, last week they, got, they put some grid questions in the physics material. Nobody did them, and they got them wrong. I don't know why. Uh, so you need to do the grid questions because they will get them all. Huh? Uh, when we, I'll do grids at the end. When we get to them, I'll explain this. Okay, uh, it's called reverse bias. If you stop flowing it, reverse bias. Reverse means it stops flowing. Okay, resistors in series. If you want to add resistors in series, very easy. Just add this plus this. Okay, resistors total in series are equivalent is equal to R one plus R two. Okay, this is the proof. Whatever. La 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 la. Uh, and then this is just the voltage. Ah, if you want to find the voltage, uh, okay. Basically, what we're trying to say is in a circuit, vo a series circuit, voltage is additive. Uh, in a series circuit, current is equal. That means the total voltage divided by total resistance is equal to the current, which is equal to the voltage at a certain point divided by the resistance at that certain point, which is equal to the total current, which is equal to the voltage at another certain point divided by the resistance at that certain point, which is equal to the current at that certain point. As in the circuit, so they're all equal to each other, meaning the voltage at any point is equal to. How would you do it? V one R T. Hold up. Yeah, so if you want the voltage at a specific po specific point, like here, if you want V one, it's going to be equal to, uh, let's say. Yeah, V one would be equal to R one times V T. over R total. R total is just R1 plus R2. That's what this equation is. You just need to know for this, this is a bit complicated. For this, just know V over R is equal to V over, V over, V total over R total is equal to V1 over R1 because current is equal only for series circuits, okay? Then now for parallel. Parallel, you know, voltage is the same, but I is additive, okay? so. Since, <clears throat> uh, since I is additive, here you know that the current, the total current is equal to I1 plus I2. The total current IT over here is equal to I1 plus I2, right? Okay. The total current is always equal to the voltage I is equal to V, uh, equal to V over R. So it's equal to the total voltage by the total resistance. Equals, the, total, the total current equals to I1 plus I2, right? So it's equal to the... I1, which is V1 over R1, right? Plus I2, which is V2 over R2. And you know that V is the same in a parallel circuit. So these Vs cancel. So you get V plus V over R1 plus R2. And I think it gets simplified down here. You basically get... This, is, this isn't important here. But the, to the important part is this. You get that the total resistance is equal to the product divided by the sum. This is very important. You can use this or you can use this one here. But honestly, when it's two resistors, this is way, way faster. Okay. Product divided by the sum. Okay. Memorize. In the case of two resistors only, product divided by the sum. Okay. Product divided by the sum. That's for parallel resistors. They will solve quiz questions on this very easily. Uh, okay. 
هلا this is just for measurement you need we have ammeters voltmeters and uh, ammeters voltmeters and uh, ohm meter multimeter whatever ammeters in order not to modify the current that is intended to be measured ammeters have very small resistance okay uh, an ideal ammeter has zero resistance okay this is stuff you have to memorize an ammeter okay it's intended you want to measure current so since you want to measure current they should have very very small resistance okay an ideal ammeter has zero resistance okay it's made this is these are all very important the ammeter is made of a sensitive galvanometer a galvanometer is, a, is an instrument that measures very small electric current this galvanometer has a coil that can hardly handle a few milliamperes since it can hardly handle a few milliamperes since you don't want to damage it you connect it in parallel with a resistor that is called a shunt resistor okay i'll explain this in a second this way you won't need a large amount of current to cause a deflection basically you have here is the ammeter okay and here is the shunt resistor what happens if is if you bombard this ammeter with too much current it's going to explode and it's going to deflect too much and it's just going to it's going to stop working you're going to break it so that's why we add something called rs which is the shunt resistor which basically is like oh wait let me steal some of your current so that i don't break the galvanometer and it resists some electric current okay that way the galvanometer is not broken okay uh, and it has a formula okay basically the shunt resistance is equal to the full scale current times the resistance of the coil or galvanometer divided by uh, the total current minus i full scale let me show you so you can better understand this here these two are in parallel that means voltage is the same that means r i here is equal to r i here the current that passes through uh, the current that passes through uh, the uh, yeah, yeah i don't know why i wrote it like this this is wrong this is wrong this is i minus i alpha basically the current that passes through the galvanometer over here is called the full scale resistance it causes a full deflection okay then obviously it's i you lose i f s so what's left the total current i minus how much i lost i f s so it's going to be left i minus i f s so you know the resistance of the here is the shunt resistor okay the shunt resistor r so the resistance r i up so what's the resistance up it's the shunt resistance times the current passing through the shunt resistor which is called i minus i f s equal to the resistance that passes through the coil which is called r c or r g or whatever i call it r g something like, i'll just put r c times the current that passes through the the coil or the galvanometer i f s right so this is the formula you need to memorize it can be simplified into this the shunt resistance is equal to the full scale resistance times the galvanometer uh, resistance of the coil or galvanometer over uh, i minus i f s memorize this okay that's it for ammeter voltmeters it's this it, it basically so easy it uses the same galvanometer as the ammeter but now we don't want to measure current so there's very little current so we need a large amount of resistance in the galvanometer okay that that's pretty much it it looks like this it's in series now lot of resistance and uh, very easy now we have multimeters multimeters they use current voltage and resistance from the name multi you, you have digital multimeters and analog multimeters obviously digital multimeters are more precise okay that's very very these are very very easy guys uh, then you have ohm meters ohm meters uh, they can use multimeters multimeters may, may be used uh, multimeters may be used ohm meter that measures the resistance sure uh, uh, uh yeah ohm meters how an ohm meter works is it basically measures resistance so to measure the resistance it needs uh, a multimeter it has a small cell that sends small currents through the conductor with a known emf it will read the current knowing v converts to r uses a rheostat okay la 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 la, la. okay <clears throat> basically what happens the the ohm meter it's like every other one like the voltmeter like the ammeter except you add a cell the cell you have to know that cells emf that's you know it's three volts so that means the voltage is 3.0 you know it's emf type we want to calculate resistance so we need to know how much current right what we know is that this small cell sends small currents through the conductor with a known emf so we know its voltage it will read the current we saw we have a galvanometer here it has a galvanometer in it to read the current 
So we now have I, we have V. Can we, what, can we find R? Yes. So what the ohm meter does is it calculates the V divided by I and finds you the R. Okay. So it uses a real stat. You can use a real stat, which decreases current, increases, la, la, la. Okay. This is yap, yap. Uh, these are important. A full deflection is caused if R is approximately zero, if, if there's no resistance. So there's a lot of current. And there's no deflection if there's no current passing. Okay? Please, these two are very important. Okay? Okay, these guidelines, these are important because they are CA questions. Okay? Always switch uh, the meter to a high range. Okay? Uh, you need to have a high range. Don't use a low range. When using as an ammeter, be careful not to damage the galvanometer by bombarding it with too much current. Never connect an ammeter across a source of EMF. Don't. You can't measure. It's not good to memorize to measure the current of an EMF. Yeah, need or like a cell. Who, who measures the current of a cell? Never connect an ohm meter to an energized circuit. Okay. When switching ranges, never switch through the ohm meter. Please memorize these five. They're very important. Okay, hello, let's start with the quiz. It should be, should be, I be very easy. Okay, what is the main function of the rheostat in this current, in this circuit? Obviously, guys, you know, rheostat, they manipulate current. It's to vary what? Current. You can just put current. At what point is the rheostat set for maximum resistance? Maximum resistance means longest length. Right? When is it the longest length? If I put it at x, if I connect y to x, the circuit will go like this. This way, am I using the rheostat? No. But if I connect Y to Z, it's going to go like this and then go down. This way, am I passing through the rheostat? Yes. So that's why Z will give me the longest resistance, highest resistance. Question two. Okay, you need to know which one is which. which this one we know, it's a semiconducting diode. And this one, since it's a straight line, it's nothing except ohmic conductor. Only ohmic conductors are straight lines passing through the origin when it's an IV graph. Here, they gave you two resistances. 30 and 70 are connected in parallel. What is the equivalent resistance? Our equivalent, I'm going to use this formula, equals the product divided by sum. 30 times 70 over 30 plus 70. Okay, this is how I memorize it. 2,100 divided by 100, you get 21. Very, very, very simple. Very, very easy. Okay. Uh, three resistors of 15, 20, and 50 are connected in series. What's the equivalent resistance? In series, what do you do when you want equivalent resistance? Just add up. Okay, very, very easy. Question five. Okay, a potentiometer is connected in series with a 6 volt power source. So, this is the potentiometer here. This is the 6 volt power source. The slider of the potentiometer can be placed anywhere between points X and Z. Point Y is the center of the potentiometer. Where would we place the slider in order to give a zero output voltage? We want zero voltage. Remember, V is equal to resistance times current. Since we're working with a potentiometer, it, we're, we're dealing with resistance. If you want zero voltage, that means you have to make resistance zero. You can't change current, okay? Potentiometers only, they only change voltage, okay? You can't change the current. So what's going to be a zero when the, when the voltage is zero? What do I want to be zero? The resistance. So what do I do? I place it at Z. Why when I place it at Z? Because when I place it at Z, the slider, that means I won't pass through the resistor, right? Okay, where should we place the slider in, K in order to give a maximum voltage? Remember, again, V equals Ri. If I want the maximum voltage, that means I should have the maximum resistance. So if I want the maximum resistance, I need the longest length of the resistor, so I'm going to place it at X. That means it's going to pass through like this. Okay. طيب. Where should we place to give a 3 voltage output? Okay, here it's 6, and I want 3. It's just half of that, right? So obviously, I just place it halfway through very very easy okay these questions and yeah, it's so easy Wallah. to study the characteristics of a circuit element what graph should be plotted i v graph very important question seven fill in the provided spaces what is this okay it's uh, they want to study an electric device potentiometer okay this is a potentiometer or a rheostat i would personally say rheostat okay this one here is uh, a resistor, obviously just a resistor, a box like this, a resistor. This one is a rheostat because it has the arrow, okay? This is a voltmeter, obviously, and this is an ammeter. And you guys, this is uh, so simple. Voila. A sensitive conductor is being used in a circuit. 
What device can be used in order to protect the sensitive conductor from overcurrent? Now, when we want to protect from overcurrent, what do we use? We use resistance. Remember when we were using the ammeter, we said we don't want to uh, put too much current. So what do we use? We use a resistor to steal some of the current. How should this device be installed? Akid in series. Uh, because remember we were talking about the ammeter. If I go back here. Uh, I think it was actually one of these, but it was in the book. But uh, anyway, here it was in series. This was what the ammeter. It was wait, hold up. I honestly can't find this in the book, but yeah, apparently, if you want it to, uh, to protect it from overcurrent, uh, you should install it in series. I think why is because when you install it in series. And if you install some anything in a series circuit, it's gonna. يعني إذا عندك هون ال okay هون عندك السل هون عندك بس عندك الفيلمنت لا okay if you install like something else like over here it's let's say there was five amperes now here here now it would like it would be the same current over here but like I don't know I don't know how to say it like this hub it it kind of drains power or energy. Yeah, well, I don't know how to say it, but uh, yeah, I think just because the current is the same throughout the whole series circuit, that way you actually know how much current is gonna go to it. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, okay. In a series circuit, you know that let's say, muscle is five amperes, right? So if you were gonna connect something else here, you know it's gonna be five amperes. But if it was in parallel, then you'd have to do calculations. Remember, you won't be sure how much. Current had to solve, so maybe it might explode due to overcurrent. Okay. A sensitive. Uh, is this the same question? Oh my god, I hate when SDP does this. Question 9. Okay, which law is used to determine the equivalent resistance of resistors grouped in series? Okay, Kirchhoff's second law. Why? If you go back, this is very important, by the way. It wasn't said, and I don't remember them saying it in the book. But grouped in series, we said that the voltage is additive, right? The voltage is additive, meaning V over R is equal to V over R is equal to V over R. Okay? We're basically using the fact that voltage is additive. And since voltage is additive, what law is that? Second law. But his first law was about current. Second law is about voltage. Okay, so Kirchhoff's second law is the one for grouping in series. Just know that V over V, uh, V over R equals V over R. Okay, because current is equal in series. What is the equivalent resistor here? They're in series, so you can just add 4 plus 5 plus 6. Okay, very, very easy, guys. You have 20 ohms and uh, 30 ohms here. They are in. They are in parallel. They're parallel here. Please don't think this is series because look here, A, B, they put these lines to show that there's like an extra circuit here. Okay? So, what does this mean when they're in parallel? The R equivalent is equal to the product divided by the sum. Okay? So, 600 uh, divided by 50, which is 12. Yeah, yeah. Question 12, you have R1 is 230, R2 is 100, R3 is 25, they want the equivalent resistance. Oh, well, she deal with the ones in parallel. R2 is 100, R3 is 25. R equivalent, what is equal to product over the sum, which is equal to, let's put this in our calculator, divided by 120. 20. So now you treat all of this, right, as how much? As 20 ohms. So you're going to just take this all as one resistor, 20 ohms. Now, would you deal it, R1 is uh, 230. Would you deal with it as if these two are in parallel or series? Now series, because you're dealing it all as if it's one resistor that has 20 ohms. So step one is always find the R equivalent of the parallel, and then deal with the equivalent resistance of the parallel circuit as if it's in series with the other resistor. 
So now I have 20 ohms to 30 ohms there in series. So it's just going to be add them up to 50. The diagram below describes a circuit in which the current and pedestrian difference can be controlled. In diagram A, a kid, it's controlling current because you're just putting it like this. B is potential difference Y because it has input output. Whenever you have input output, like there's another circuit branching off, like if there was another circuit here in, in diagram A, then it would be a potential meter, but there's no. Like see here, there's another circuit branching off. Question 14. Okay, here, what is it? It's a thermistor. Why is it a thermistor? Because Okay, why isn't it a filament lamp? Let me see if filament lamp was an option. If filament lamp was an option, then it should also be correct, but I don't see. I don't know. Huh. Huh. Ah, oh, ah, oh, ah, oh, ah. Oh. They swapped V with I. Oh, okay, okay. They're trying to be slick with it. Okay. So basically, I don't know why they decided to swap it, but if it was, if it, if they, if it was originally, now we studied I, V. If it was I, V, it would be the other way around. So it would be I is increasing, so it would go straight, and then I is increasing, so it would go up. Okay, and which one was like this? Obviously, it was like this. Which one was like this? This was the thermistor, like we showed over here, right? High filament lamp, high thermistor. Please don't get confused. It's supposed to be IV graph, huh? IV. Not allowed to be VI. If it was VI, just analyze it. You're seeing that current is increasing. When is current increasing as temperature increases? Yeah, that means there's less resistance as temperature increases if current is increasing. That is only for a thermistor. For low currents, what's the resistance? Okay, R is equal to V over I. So basically, just find it. Just take any point and divide. I can see here it's at 0 0.1, it's 5. So the voltage is 5 and the current is 0 0.1. And you're supposed to find the slope, but since you're starting at 0, 0, you can just take any point and divide. Okay? But find the slope, Ahsan. Like you have 0 0.1, 0.5 and 0 0.2, 10. 10 minus 5 is 5. 0 0.2 minus 0 0.1 is 0 0.1. So you get 50. Okay? Question 15. You have the diagram below, resistor 1 is 60, resistor 2 is 30, resistor 3 is 50, potential difference. Okay, what is the equivalent resistance of 1 and 2? How do you find the equivalent resistance in parallel? It's always product divided by sum. So 60 times 30, product divided by 60 plus 30, sum. So 1,800 divided by 9, 20, I keep 20 ohms. Okay, the total resistance of the circuit. You now have, you treat the parallel circuit as 1, 20 ohm. The other one is 50 ohm. How do you find their equivalent? Now these two are parallel, right? 20 plus 50, 70. As uh, they're in series, not parallel. Now they're in series with each other. So 20 plus 50, 70. After you find the parallel circuit and find its equivalent resistance, خلص, it becomes series. Mash, mash, parallel. Because now you're treating it as one whole thing. The current passing through the resistor 3 is how much? You know that I is equal to V over R. The voltage in resistance 3 is 14. The resistance... Uh, in resistance 3 is 50. 14 divided by 50, it's supposed to be 0 0.2. Let's see, 14 divided by 50. 0 0.28. Resistance 3. Huh? Oh! Oh, no, 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 don't turn that first time. Yeah, yeah. You can't use... Sorry. When you reach resistor 3, Carlos, you have... Because it's frozen positive to negative. The resistance is now 70 from part B. So you do 14 divided by 70, which is equal to 0 0.2. You have to do the total resistance, okay? The current through any point, this is a mistake many students make. They use the resistance of that bulb, okay, of that uh, resistor. You need to use the total resistance, okay? 14 divided by 70, and you get 0 0.2. The potential difference across resistor 3 is what? Across resistance 3, it's V equals R times I. So the resistance is uh, 0 0.2. The current, sorry, the current is 0 0.2. The resistance is, now you take 50. Now you take 50, not uh, 70. It's 10. Okay? This is take, it's a rule. I will see you do I equals V over R. You take the total resistance. 
even if it's passing to 3, uh, which is 14 divided by 70, and the potential difference across 3 is just V equal R I. Okay? But this time, you're talking about the voltage of 3, so the resistance of, th of 3, 50 times the current, which in the total circuit is 0 0.2. Why you're saying the current passing through resistor 3? Why did I use R total? This is, yani, it's, a, it's a very good question. The current, in a, it's because this is a series circuit, okay? In a series circuit, the current is the same everywhere. I is equal. So I here is equal to here, equal to here, equal to here. So since it's equal, you have to use R over, sorry, V over R total. You have to use re total resistance. But in series, the voltage is not equal. So you, each one is different. So that means you use the resistance of this times the current, okay? Question 16. A voltmeter measures voltage 10. Its resistance is 2 kilo, uh, kilo ohm. A shunt resistance is used to modify its scale so the voltmeter can reach voltage 15. Then they say the shunt resistor should be connected in what with the voltmeter? Akid, if you're talking about the shunt resistor with the voltmeter, then it should be series. Okay? Because Inta, you want a large. Wait. Yeah. Since it's a voltmeter, you want large resistance. Okay? Even though it wasn't in the book. In the book, it, they talked about ammeter, not voltmeter. How much is the resistance of the shunt? Since we're connecting it in series, you know, equivalent resistance in series, since current is the same, V over V1 over R1 equals V2 over R2. So that means 10 over 2 equals 250 over R2. Uh, hold up. Okay, yeah, yeah. So I just got it. You're going to get R2 is equal to 10 kilo ohm. Okay, 10 kilo ohm. But they want the shunt resistor. Okay, you should know that the shunt resistor is equal to the total resistance minus the resistance of the voltmeter. Okay, the resistance of the voltmeter is 2, right? So the total resistance is 10. So it's 10 minus 2, which is 8. Okay, just do it like this. Uh, if you want. A formula for it, it's very similar to the ammeter one. You can do the shunt resistance is equal to V2 R1 over V1 minus R1. This can work for shunt resistance in voltmeters. You're going to get, in this case, V2 R1, so 50 times 2 over 10 minus 2. 100 over 10 is 10 minus 2 is 8 kilo ohm. Okay, this will work. Seventeen. Okay. Consider the circuit shown below. The bulbs in the circuit are identical. So all of them are identical. The brightness of bulb one with compared to bulb two is what? Akid. The current passing through bulb one is I is obviously greater than the current passing through bulb two. Because over here it goes down. And it splits, this was I, it splits into I1 and I2. So, so obviously bulb 1 is greater than bulb 2. The brightness of bulb 3 is obviously equal to the brightness of bulb 4 since they have the same current. No current will flow if the circuit in the circuit if bulb which one is screwed? Obviously if 1 is screwed. Because if 2 is screwed, this one خلص, it won't pass through here. It will just continue going through here. If 3 is screwed, it won't pass through here, but it will pass through here. But if 1 is screwed, it won't pass through the circuit at all. 17, very easy. I don't know what, what type of question this is. Uh, if bulb 2 is unscrewed, then the brightness of bulb 1 will obviously remain the same, and 3 will become 0. Guys, what are these questions? If you screw uh, bulb 2, bulb 1 won't care. It's going to continue going through here. But obviously here, it's not going to flow through bulb 3 anymore. I don't know. She was well, Sakif. But sorry, let's do grids. So we started with the, the grids. Uh, I'm I'm just gonna do the grids. I advise you to if you're not gonna do anything, at least do the grids. Uh, but do do everything. It's more very important. A potentiometer is connected parallel to a voltage source, as shown in the diagram below. The schematic diagram is of the potentiometer is also shown. An IGCSE student needs an output voltage of three volt volt for an electric motor that she constructs. Where should she place the wiper of the potentiometer? Explain your reasoning. A kid, she should place it over here at. Two. Why two? Because she only needs half, so she's gonna use half of the resistometer. Let's see. 
when the wiper is set at point 1 at voltage V is 0 when it's at 1 أكيد 0 صح this is it here while at point 3 the potentiometer will be equal to the input voltage of 6 right if at 3 it's going to be equal to how much you have which is 6 therefore for the student to get 3 volts you must place it halfway between point 1 and point 3 صح between 0 and 3 between 1 and 0 at 3 it's 6 so between 0 and 6 we want it to be 3 so it's halfway between it right so therefore you just place it halfway between 1 and 3 okay this one here this is the grid i talked about in the notes what is component x called it's called a, a diode so what's it called exactly it's called a diode yeah what happens to the circuit when the poles of component x are flipped obviously the current will stop flowing in the circuit and this is called reverse bias but they don't really ask that but if you flip this basically what's happening here it goes like this it goes like this la 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 la, la and it continues like this it only allows it to flow in this way in this way but if I and I write a khatal al diode and I made it like this, that means it's gonna stop here. This line is to stop. Okay, it's gonna stop here. It's not gonna go through. Okay, so the current will stop flowing throughout the circuit. Fifty-seven. Describe and draw the IV characteristics of these four. I'm gonna open the solution for you. Okay. Our she for an ohmic conductor, it's directly proportional. I is uh, sorry. The current is directly proportional to potential difference in an ohmic conductor. Uh, and this is if the temperature and other conditions are constant. So the IV graph of an ohmic conductor is a straight line passing through the origin. This is important. The guide is 57. I'm telling you it will come definitely. At low current. Now for a filament lamp. At low currents, the characteristic, it's like an ohmic conductor at low currents. Okay, it's a straight line. However, when the current increases, more heat will be produced, right? Since there's more current flowing. And that means the temperature will rise. That means what happens when temperature rises? Resistance will increase. And that means the slope of the resistance of the, of the current Will that mean, therefore, it begin to decrease? So as you're starting to go up, it's going to start decreasing. A thermistor has a negative temperature coefficient, okay, NTC, and how we study NTC, which means that its resistance decreases as temperature increases. So there's less resistance. That means as you're moving, what's going to happen since there's less resistance? If there's less resistance, more current will flow. So you're going to have higher I. It's going to go up. So between this and this, this one current decreased, so it went like this. This one current increased, so it went like this. Okay, so the slope increases. Diodes exhibit very high resistance in one direction and low resistance in the other, in the forward direction. So it's low resistance. So a diode is nearly ohmic, but in the reverse direction, a very small current flows. So here, very small current flows, but in the forward direction, a lot of resistance flows. You get what I mean? Type. Grids. What's the equivalent resistance? This one is in the quiz. 15 plus 25 plus 50, because it's in series. 61. What's the equivalent resistance here? Since it's in parallel, you do, since it's in parallel, this is important. If you had two resistors, you just do the product divided by the sum, right? But since you don't, this is important, what do you do? You do 1 over 10, sorry, you, sorry, you do this. 1 over R equivalent is equal to 1 over 10 plus 1 over 15 plus 1 over 20. Put this in your calculator. 1 over 10 plus 1 over 15 plus 1 over 20 you get 13 over 60 so 1 over r equivalent is equal to 13 over 60 so what is r equivalent equal to you flip so r equivalent is equal to 60 over 13 this is extremely important so what do you do oh you put 1 over 1 over 1 over and add them then when you get that you just flip your answer okay so you get 60 over 13 which is 4.6. Let's see what's the answer. 4.6. Okay. This is for the case that you have more than one resistor in parallel. Okay. It was in my notes over here. Okay. Uh, question uh, 62. We need 2.23. We don't, yeah, we need it. Three resistors of resistances R1, R2, R3 are grouped as shown below. Okay. Calculate the voltages across R1 and R2. Type. We can do it through a few steps. Our she we have R1 is 2 ohms. R2 is uh, 4 ohms. R3 is 9 ohms. Okay. So, here, this is wrong that they put 12. It's supposed to be 4.5. I don't know why they put 12. Okay, this is very important here. R1 is 2 ohms. R2 is 4 ohms. 
R3 is 9 ohm. Okay. Calculate the voltage across R1 and R2. Voltage is equal to resistance times current. We need to know. These are in parallel. So current is not equal. How do I find the current over here? Current is equal to the voltage divided by the resistance. We know that since it's parallel, ah, the voltage is the same everywhere. It's 4.5 everywhere. So it's 4.5. But the resistance in this branch, how do I calculate it? It's R1 plus R2. They're in series with each other. So 2 plus 4, which is 6. So you're going to get uh, 0 0.75 ampere. So if you go back here to, to our voltages, we can now do R times I. For V1, there is, it's going to be equal to resistance 1 times I. Right? The current is the same for R1 and R2. So V1 is equal to the resistance 1, 2 ohm, times the current, 0 0.75. So you're going to get 1.5 volts. And then V2 is equal to V2 times I. Sorry, V2 is R2 times I, uh, which is 4 times the current, 0 0.75, which is uh, 3.0 volts. Let's see, is that correct? Yes. See? They, I don't know why they, uh, they did too much here, Allah. Yeah, they're doing too much here, Allah. Uh, my explanation is better, Sarah. Uh, like, okay, if you want to follow this, follow this. I summed it up in two steps. Um, how would you find the current in the branch? Then just multiply the current by each resistance. We'll get you the same answer. Hello, for uh, question 63. A 500 ohm 1 milliampere ammeter is to be made into an ammeter that can read up to 5 ampere. Determine the shunt resistance. Hella, we're using the equation for the ammeter's shunt resistance. So shunt resistance is equal to I uh, times R of the galvanometer over I minus. Wait, hold up. Yeah, I minus IFS. It's IFS here. IFS times R of the galvanic meter or R of the coil uh, over this. So it's going to be equal to full scale resistance is usually, uh, sorry, sorry, full scale current, IFS, is always the, the small one. Okay, it's always the small one. 1 milliampere. What's 1 milliampere? It's 1 times 10 to the minus 3 ampere. So you put 1 times 10 to the minus, uh, minus 3 times R of the galvanic meter. It's the small one, 500 over. The current, the total current, this is now the big one, 5, minus IFS, so minus 1 times 10 to the minus 3. And you get, let's see, uh, 1 times 10 to the power of minus 3, times 500, and 5 minus 1 times 10 to the minus 3. You get this, you get 0 0.1 ampere. As they show ampere ohm. Finding resistance, which should be all. Uh, that's it for this recording. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, good luck in your exam.